China says the measures it's taking to safeguard its sovereignty are necessary after Nancy Pelosi's so-called irrational visit to Taiwan. Malaysia expects to lift the ban on chicken exports at the end of the month after producing an oversupply. And one flat in Queenstown breaks the record for the most expensive HDB resale in history. Hello, you're watching The Big Story with me, Chiao Suen. And the follow-up continues with the US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's short but very controversial trip to Taiwan, with China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi calling her visit a manic, irresponsible and highly irrational act by the US. Speaking at a meeting of Southeast Asian foreign ministers in Cambodia, Mr Wang said China had made the utmost diplomatic effort to avert crisis, but would never allow its core interests to be hurt. He said China's current and future measures are necessary and aimed at safeguarding national sovereignty and security. Beijing views Taiwan as part of Chinese territory. Meanwhile, Chinese military helicopters were spotted flying past Pingtan Island, which is very close to Taiwan, ahead of live firing exercises, which began around noon today. The military drills are the biggest ever in the waters surrounding Taiwan and will continue until 12 p.m. on Sunday. Now, in response, Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense tweeted this, saying that its forces are operating as usual and monitoring its surroundings in response to irrational activities from PRC and that they seek no escalation. Joining us to discuss the ongoing tensions brewing between Taiwan, China and the US since Mrs Pelosi's controversial visit is The Straits Times China correspondent Elizabeth Law. So Liz, Mrs Pelosi has moved on and left Taiwan, but China remains up in arms, with Beijing describing its actions as defensive and a deterrence, and that they will do whatever is necessary. Ominous words that seem to suggest that China will not back down. What more do you think Beijing will do in the coming days? Will the military action and economic sanctions continue to escalate? Right, so what we've seen today thus far, uh, at least up to this point of Mrs. Pelosi's visit, she's come, she's gone, and it seems for now that Taiwan appears to be the only one that is paying the price so-called for, for this visit, and China hasn't really taken any tangible actions against the US. Now, the thing is that what we definitely expect is military exercises are going to continue. Uh, we have seen certain state media saying that missiles are going to fly over Taiwan. As of this point on Thursday afternoon, we haven't seen that happen, and if that they actually do have missiles flying across Taiwan Island. It is going to be a major escalation and things can get very, very dangerous very, very quickly. Uh, so it's something that we hope wouldn't happen. But uh, what has been going on is that the Chinese Air Force has been sending planes that have been crossing the median line, which is that unofficial boundary between China and Taiwan uh, in the Taiwan Strait. And as of today, I think there have been 20 something planes again that have crossed the median line. So what that actually means is that they could be within, uh, in Taipei within minutes and uh, it could lead to a, a vast escalation once again. And, you know, again, any miscalculation when you have so little time that things happen within minutes, uh, the situation can escalate very, very quickly and it can lead to a very dangerous situation. So Liz, as you mentioned earlier, right, at this current moment, beyond just rhetoric, not much action has been taken against the US. Most of it has been taken against Taiwan. Do you think China will turn its attention to the US soon? And what kind of action do you think Beijing will take to punish the US? So that, I feel, has been the big question that everyone here and possibly in Washington has been asking as well, but what exactly is China going to do against Washington? But, you know, they also have to balance that between something that is, a, is too severe that could lead to open conflict. And that is definitely something that neither Beijing nor Washington wants. Uh, but at the same time, the relationship between both sides is so acrimonious now 
that it's very easy for things to go wrong very quickly. But I think what many of us are thinking of is that there will be a reaction or some sort of retaliation within the next couple of days or weeks. But I feel like uh, this isn't what is going to happen. Instead, China is likely to play a long game uh, and possibly have sanctions or ban imports or, you know, the possibilities are endless. And I think that is something that all of us are watching very, very closely. But my personal view is that it's not going to happen within the coming days or weeks. Thank you, Liz. This has been Straits Times China correspondent Elizabeth Law. And Mrs. Pelosi's journey through Asia continues to South Korea. Mrs. Pelosi and her South Korean counterpart vowed to support efforts to maintain a strong deterrence against North Korea and achieve its denuclearization. Mrs. Pelosi also reportedly plans to visit the joint security area near the heavily fortified inter-Korean border, patrolled together by American-led UN Command and North Korea. Good news for chicken lovers as Malaysia announces it expects to lift the ban on chicken exports on 31st August. But it's unclear if exports to Singapore will resume immediately. In response to questions in Parliament, Malaysia's Agriculture and Food Industries Minister defended the decision to ban exports, calling it a temporary measure, and that as a result of the ban, Malaysia has a slight oversupply of chickens. This intervention is temporary and is scheduled to end on August 31st at this point. This ban is temporary, and similar protectionist steps have been taken by other countries that have also faced a shortage of food supplies. When conditions are stable all over the country, not just oversupply in a few locations, but all across the country, of course the government will decide to allow exports. A flat in Queenstown has sold for $1,418,000, making it the most expensive resale flat in history. The five-room premier apartment loft unit in Queenstown Sky Terrace at Dawson was one of the 2,363 flats transacted last month, of which 33 units were sold for at least $1 million. Housing board flat resale prices rose for the 25th consecutive month in July, with prices increasing by an average of 0.7% compared with June. Those are our top stories. I'm Chao Suan. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.